for zero and lift off of Endeavour. Going with east and west dooming at the International Space Station. Starting to drift away. Traveling at 28,000 kilometers per hour and 400 kilometers above the Earth, the International Space Station is the largest artificial satellite that has ever orbited our planet. The ISS functions as an observatory, laboratory and workshop where astronauts from around the world have been living on board in zero gravity conditions for the past 10 years, some staying up there for more than six months at a time. A couple of months ago, I was offered the chance to speak to the astronauts on board. And it wasn't an opportunity I was going to turn down, even though at the time I was in the middle of Africa. I'm just a few minutes away from talking to the International Space Station, which is something that I've never said before. A uh, phone call to space. Now, I remember in 1981, the first space shuttle launching, uh, John Young and Bob Crippen piloting it. It's, it's etched into my memory. So to, to make a phone call to, to into space, into orbit, just to speak to them, just to have that little, that small connection for a small piece of time with that greatest of human endeavours excites me. Standing by were flight engineer Scott Kelly, Commander Doug Wheelock and flight engineer Dr Shannon Walker. Now you might think that it'd be really complicated making a phone call to space, but actually all I needed was an ordinary phone line. Station Houston on Space Ground 2, uh, are you ready for the event? We're ready for the event, Houston. BBC in the live stargazing series, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is BBC live stargazing series. How do you hear me? At BBC, we've got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you for speaking to us today. I do think the space program is the, the, the ultimate human achievement. I, I, I genuinely do. But how difficult is it up there? No day is routine up here. Uh, space always has a surprise waiting around every corner for us. Because we're orbiting the Earth once every 90 minutes, every, every 45 minutes we're getting a sunrise or a sunset. And in direct sunlight, we're seeing temperatures anywhere between 250 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when we go into eclipse on the uh, backside of the Earth, the uh, temperatures can plummet to uh, 275, 300 degrees below zero. And spacewalks, are they genuinely a different feeling? From being inside the shuttle or inside the space station. And you open that hatch and the only thing uh, between you and uh, the vacuum of space is that thin visor. Uh, it's, uh, it's a real eye-opening experience. The most encouraging part of, uh, of doing a spacewalk is knowing uh, that you've got a team of people behind you and you can hear them in your headset, and that's very, very comforting because uh, there are a, a tremendous amount of things uh, that can go wrong out there. Dr. Walker, could you... Tell me a little bit about what um, scientific experiments you plan to do when you're on board the space station. Well, we've got a number of scientific experiments from just about every um, scientific field, from material science to uh, astronomy to um, biology and human physiology. And so a lot of what I'm doing actually is the human physiology size, where I'm using myself as a, I'm being used as a test subject to study some of the effects of being in space on the human body. How would you answer people who don't think that human exploration is valuable? As humans, we need to keep moving forward as a society and not stagnate. So we need to uh, keep pushing the boundaries and keep exploring. I wonder if, you know, if we had a, a Kennedy today, a Kennedy-like speech that said, you know, we choose to go to Mars before this decade is out. Uh, do you think that we've been in a position to do that? Do, do we know enough to, to make that next great leap into the solar system now, if, if we had the will and the money? Someday when we do go to Mars, uh, the things we learn here on the International Space Station will be uh, critical to that effort. And, and I'm somewhat of an optimist that, uh, you know, anything is within our, our grasp. And I think we could, um, you know, go to Mars just like we went to the moon in a very short period of time in the uh, 1960s. So I think it is within our capability to do that if we, if we uh, chose to. 
Well, well Station, we, we've run out of time, but it was a real pleasure talking to you all. Thank you. I think you are. Genuinely inspirational, and please keep doing it. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, it's a real pleasure for us to talk to you today. That was wonderful, actually. I mean, they genuinely were talking about the, you know, the inspirational value of spaceflight, the technical difficulty of it, but also the reason that you do it. You know, as Kennedy said, you do it not because it's easy, but because it's hard.